Hello, welcome to Green Hat Red Beard Adventures. This video is in regards to my new leather tinder pouch. This pouch I made myself. Uh, please, I don't know anything about leather, so please don't ask me what type of leather this is. But what I can tell you about it is it's thin, really thin stuff. I can crumple it all into a ball and just let it go, you know, just as easily. It's not like some really thick, thick stuff where you can just like having trouble with, uh, you know, maneuvering it around. Um, a friend of mine was able to hook me up with this uh, leather. Uh, he gave me a big enough piece so I can use, make two really big pouches, but uh, so far I've only made one. Um, I've chosen this particular design because it's the easiest to make. It requires no stitching, uh, no sewing of any kind, no needle and thread, nothing. The only thing here is holding it all together is actually this par paracord right here and this toggle. So. Right now, this is what I have inside of here, but before I get into what's in there, let's talk about the leather pouch itself for a moment. Um, basically, it's a circle. It's, it's easy, trust me, it's far more easier than it looks. It's just one big, regular circle, 15 inches in diameter. The holes that I marked out on the inside, the, what I call the bad sides, the rougher side, as opposed to the good side, which is nice, smooth, clean stuff here. Again, I don't know very much about leather, but... Uh, and I'm going to talk about how I made it, and you're, trust me, you're going to know all about me not knowing much about leather. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, the holes positions are roughly uh, three, quarter of an inch, three quarters of an inch from the edge to the center line of the hole. I just drew a little dot, dot. Uh, the hole separations are roughly one inch apart from each other, so you know, one hole. So you can see right there. From one hole to the next one inch 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 I just eyeballed it and guessed you know there's no tape measure here involved at all so the only tape measuring I did was just to mark out the overall size of the circle for the leather after that uh, I just marked out holes and what I did before you know punching out the holes I drew a little line with pencil you can't see it anymore but I started connecting one hole over to the next and then this hole over to this one here and all the way down, all the way around. That's just basically to make sure I got enough holes and like, cause I'm not sure if it's an even number of holes or odd number of holes. So I just drew a line connecting two, connecting the next two, then connecting the next two, just all the way around. Because you want the paracord to be sticking out on this side, which is the good side here. This is where you want them. If you add another hole, then the paracord will stick out one side and be sticking in the other side. You don't want that. You want them both to be out on the same side. And then basically, once uh, then you can use a professional tool, which is like a like a hand vice grip tool or a punch tool. And here's where my inexperience comes. I used a whole a singular hole punch for punching paper. Yeah, I know. I uh, didn't. The one I had was a very older one, so I didn't punch it all the way. So I actually had to use scissors to cut out the little hole. I just like punched it so I could mark the circle and then just like cut it out with the uh, scissors. Sorry, I think someone's coming by. Yeah, there's a lot of garbage here. I know, somebody. And that's a mirror right there. That is a mirror, and it's creepy. But believe it or not, this is the least creepiest spot I've been in today. There's my hammock and my backpack, by the way. Anyways, back to the pouch. So that's really, you, know, you just basically, you just want the, uh, you know, the rough side to be the inside, the clean, smooth, beautiful side on the outside. And you just pull the string and just closes it up. Uh, for my first, for the first time that you close it up, I suggest you put something in there, like maybe uh, like a tin container, maybe a ball or something like that, something small. So that way, when you draw up the drawstring for the very first time, it lets the leather take its shape, a nice rounded shape. So what I did at this point here is I actually shortened the strings down so that way it doesn't go all the way flat again. So that now this way, you know, it holds a nice shape like this. And I uh, put this nice little wooden toggle on here then just tied a knot here, knot here, and that was that's it. And you just tighten her down. Um, anyways, so what do we have in here? Uh, this, by the way, is my flint and steel kit, at least one of them anyway. This goes in here as well. Um, so what we got here, we got a whole bunch of fat wood right here from the stick here that I was carving with earlier. This is a store-bought one. Um, and here, I'm, I can't remember what this was. A, a friend of mine gave me the wood and uh, just started carving it a couple of weeks back. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head now. And underneath it is a uh, jute rope. 
you see right there. There's a whole bunch of it there, a couple of inches long each. It's like jute twine, but more thicker and more fuller. Uh, here's like the jute twine right there, a little string bits right there. And then what this here is, is jute twine where I've actually pulled it all apart in advance. This is some more of the same stuff, similar stuff anyway. Um, at some point uh, on my way out of here, I'm going to try to find a birch tree and get some uh, birch bark off of the tree and add to the pouch as well. So this is uh, this one here is like the big one. This is like a 15 inch diameter pouch when it's flat. Um, I have another one that I've actually made uh, under supervision. It was my first time making and that's how I learned how to make this particular one. Um, it was I think roughly around it's 11 or 12 inch diameter one. It's much, much smaller. And I keep jute twine in it. Uh, it's in my other backpack. But uh, anyways, there's my Mora Garberg knife. Awesomeness. So I'm going to see if I can do this up. Do up the... I don't have my little tripod with me today, otherwise I would totally take advantage of it. But uh, So I'm just going to try to do this up one-handedly. Here, you know what? I'll just set the camera down for just a second. What There we go. Sorry, it's a little difficult doing that one-handed, but I tighten it up all the way, and I'll just put a little overhand knot there, and I'll just stick this all into my backpack, or if I'm uh, out bushcrafting or, say, like out of a campout event, I'll just tie off the strings to my belt and just let it hang off of my belt. You know, there's options there. So I'm sitting on a very cold and very, very wet rock right now. Just, uh making some wood shavings out of this uh, fat wood piece so I can add some more to the kit and so there's more to this kit because I want to fill it up as much as I can speaking of which the flint and steel goes in there as well and I forgot to put it in there but it doesn't matter once I turn the camera off I'm gonna open it up and finish what I'm doing anyway so as you can see my uh, hammock is set up right there and there's my backpack right there next to it I laid down in it for a short time I had muddy boots on so I didn't want to take and I didn't want to take them off so I just didn't stay in it for very long. Anywho, uh, again, like I said, I don't know what kind of leather this is. I just know it's really thin and very easy to move itself around. But, uh, you know, once it's uh, fully done up and once you pull the course tight, it's all going to cinch itself up right here. You can see it's like pretty decent and good in size. You know, it's, you know, it's probably about three and a half, four inches tall. And right now the diameter is about seven and a half inches. Uh, I think that's half of 15, yeah, pretty much. It's Sunday, I'm not doing math today. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, overall, it's like my first real Tinder pouch that I made all by myself, and I'm very happy about it, very proud of it, and uh, it works really nicely too, so. Uh, let's see that I'm doing that now. So I'm gonna have to undo it anyway. Toggle holds really nicely too. You just open her up just like you would normally open up the pouch and boom, there you go. Very simple, very easy to make. Um, I didn't have the proper tools personally. I, I don't, it's not, very, it's very, very rare that I use leather with anything. So, you know, it's kind of a waste of time and a waste of money for me to go out and get all the proper tools. But, uh, you know, if you're starting out and you're looking to do this on a more serious note than I am, then yeah, go for the hole punch, the little handheld hole punch that's the proper tool. It'll save you so much more time than I did with this. It took me like two hours to make this thing, just for the hole punching alone. So, again, your choice. It depends on how you want to go with it. I decided to go without stitching it up at all and sewing because I'm terrible at it. So, And this method works really nicely, and this pouch works really effectively. Anyways, this is Green Hat Red Beard Adventures, and I'll see you around till next time.